SaneSmart, an open hardware vendor that supplies 3D printers and accessories, CNC routers, engravers, and a lot more, reached out to me to review the Mole 3D scanner. This scanner is available through SaneSmart on their main website and via their Amazon store. There's actually going to be a 20% off sale from August 21st to the 31st on both of these pages linked below in the description. Although I did receive the scanner to review, all opinions and results in this video are of my own. The Mole 3D scanner has a near-infrared light source that shines on the object being scanned to collect depth and shape data. The cameras that are used in scanning can also be used to capture textures that can be mapped onto the scanned model. This 3D scanner is advertised to be accurate for up to 0.05mm with a resolution of 0.1mm. This means that the depth measurement from the near-infrared source can be as accurate as 0.05mm while the resolution of the shape measured is 0.1mm, which I'm assuming is due to the scattering of the near-infrared light source. Also, because of the near-infrared wavelength, it's advertised to be able to scan dark objects, which is normally difficult to other 3D scanners. The scanner is able to be used with a turntable or in a handheld mode, which supposedly there are optical anti-shake modules to help collect the data steadily even if you're a little bit shaky while you're using it in a handheld mode. Thank you to SaneSmart for letting me test out this powerful little scanner, and let's get started by unboxing it. The 3D scanner and all the included components come in a pretty well-made carrying case. There are extra components you can buy to use the 3D scanner with a phone or other mobile device, but in this video I'll be using the scanner with my desktop PC. In the case is a turntable base, which is powered by a USB-C cable. Also included are components of a tripod stand to position the 3D scanner when using the turntable. The cable for the scanner plugs into the wall for power and the computer you're using it with via USB to send data to the computer. A USB Type-A to USB-C cable is included for the turntable. The AC adapter for the 3D scanner comes with region-based wall outlet connectors. Since I'm in the US, I'll be using the US standard connector. A gimbal type connection is also included for orienting the scanner while it's on the tripod stand. The scanner itself has a threaded connection on the bottom for the tripod stand assembly, as well as the connection for the power slash USB cable. On the front, there are two cameras and the near-infrared light source, as well as a circular pattern of LED lights that shine for texture scanning. There are contours on the sides of the scanner for holding it comfortably when scanning in handheld mode. A decently detailed manual helps show how to connect everything together to use the scanner. Inside another portion of the container is the top to the turntable which has some grooves, patterns, and letters on it to help tracking while scanning. The tripod assembly threads together pretty easily as shown. When plugging in the cable to the 3D scanner, the red dot on the cable connection needs to line up with the groove on the port of the 3D scanner, as it shows in the manual. Once it's connected, you can plug the USB of the scanner into your computer, and then plug the power adapter into the wall. The turntable can be powered by plugging the USB end of the cable either into a power brick or into a USB port on your computer. And although I'm showing this all connecting to my laptop, I ended up using the desktop for all the scans since my laptop is a bit old and couldn't run the 3D scan software as smoothly as my desktop could. The software recommended for this 3D scanner is JM Studio, and the link to download it is included in the video description. It can run on Windows or Mac OS, or even iOS and Android. In this video, I'll be using it on a Windows PC. When you first load up the software, the first thing that's recommended is to calibrate your scanner. If you're connected to the internet, all you need to do is ensure your scanner is connected to your computer, and then go to File and Import Calibration, or I think it says Calib for short. The pop-up window will say Connected to Internet, and you can click Import, and then you're all set. I'll go over in general how this software works, and then go into more detail when using the features during the 3D scans in this video. There are two scanning modes, Easy Scan or Table Scan. 
Easy Scan is basically a manual hand scan mode where you have an object on a surface and then move the scanner around the object to pick up all of the depth and shape data. You can control the brightness and sensitivity. Brightness will help the scanner pick up the object accurately. You'll know the correct brightness when the preview window shows no red splotches on your object being scanned. The sensitivity slider helps the scanner detect darker objects. And then scan quality helps refine the scan resolution in handheld mode, and the scan mode can be set to either geometry or texture. Geometry just creates a 3D model with no texture or coloring, while texture mode uses the camera of the 3D scanner to pick up and map the object's texture back onto the 3D model. There are also aligning features in the software that allow you to scan objects in different orientations on the turntable or even in handheld mode, so you could pick up every detail at various angles and then merge your scans together to create a more coherent mesh. The auto align in this software works well, however sometimes you'll need to use the manual alignment, which I show later on. If you're scanning an object that has a shine to it, the scanner becomes less accurate and sometimes it can't even pick it up. Every object I scanned in this video, I sprayed with a cheap dry shampoo since it created a decently uniform matte finish on the object. They have 3D scanning sprays as well, but they're a little bit more expensive and I found that dry shampoo did the trick pretty well. The first scan that I did was a table scan of a 3D printed benchy boat. This portion shows the initialization of the 3D scan, with the turntable surface being scanned. I let this run for about 20 to 30 seconds when I was using the turntable to make sure it picked it up pretty well. Here's what the software looks like when scanning an object with the turntable. It shows all the mesh points that are being picked up and rotates for 320 frames, shown on the bottom of the screen. When the scan is finished, the mesh data is shown with the turntable highlighted in pink. You can simply press the delete key on your keyboard and all the turntable points will be deleted. For this scan, to get as much data points as possible from various angles, I also turned the benchy on each side and appended the scan. Since there were key features that the software was able to recognize easily, clicking a line while it was in the automatic alignment mode worked well. Here's the benchy being scanned in the final orientation and then aligned again. Once everything is aligned properly and the turntable mesh data is removed, you can select how you want to process the mesh. Fusion is enabled to turn the points into a solid object. Remove noises helps remove random points that were picked up that aren't accurate to the object being scanned. Repair closes all holes to make a watertight model, and Simplify reduces the mesh size if you wanted to reduce the file size or simplify it. Texture mapping is only used if you scanned a texture, which in this case I did not. I didn't manually remove any of the noise just to show how the software works when it's using it without any manual cleanup of the mesh. The scan worked really well with only a little bit of noise behind the doors and windows of the boat, which makes sense since it can't really reach those internal surfaces. Here's the scan of the Benchy next to the original 3D model of the Benchy. Note that the errors in the scan also include errors from my 3D print, such as surface defects that occurred, and slight dimensional offsets just due to the tolerancing of 3D printed parts. When overlapping the 3D model versus the 3D scanned model, the dimensions look decently accurate to the original model. But to see how accurate the scanner really is, let's scan a 3D printed calibration cube and then measure it and compare. Because the calibration cube has very small differences that the software can tell when scanning in different orientations, I had to manually align the three orientations that I scanned it in. The manual alignment in this software works by having the user select three points in one scan and then the same three points in the other scan at a different orientation. I'm not sure if the software takes the user's manual input and then aligns it further, or if my manual selection of the point creates a slight error and it's not the exact same location as it is in the other scan orientation. After aligned and processed, I used the app 3D Builder to roughly measure the width of the scanned calibration cube. It came out as 20.64mm, and the 3D model is nominally 20mm. 
Let's measure my 3D printed cube to see how off the 3D print is from the 3D scanned model. My 3D printed part is 20.35 millimeters, which means that the 3D scan is off by 0.29 millimeters. However, as you can see in the image, the dry shampoo that I used to make my shiny filament have a matte finish was scraped off by my calipers, and it's very likely that it would add at least 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters to the 3D scan. The scanner is advertised to be up to 0.05 millimeters accurate, and if it was off by 0.05 millimeters on both sides, then that means that the width measurement error that would be accounted for via the dry shampoo scraping off would be 0.19 millimeters, which seems pretty reasonable. And based on this measurement with good object preparation for scanning, I believe the advertised accuracy of this scanner. Since I've only been using the turntable scanning mode in this video so far, let's test out the hand scanning mode. Here's a statue I have from the Spider-Man PS4 game that has some nice details that would be pretty cool if the scanner picked up. I'm also going to cover this statue with dry shampoo to help the scanner detect the glossy surfaces. When manually scanning the object, I try to rotate the scanner around at all angles to get every surface. I wasn't able to get as far back as I really needed to, but I thought that it should be enough to pick up most of the details. I was trying to keep my hand steady, however I did shake a good amount which is a good test of the stability of the scanner as well as the AI powered tracking of the software. The final process model shows a lot of the details with minimal errors. Those noise blobs that you see on the back of the arms and legs are due to me not reaching those surfaces with the angles I was scanning. Other than user error, this scan turned out pretty incredible for a hand scan. Next, I wanted to compare the model quality of hand scanning versus turntable scanning. The Spider-Man on the left of the screen was scanned with the turntable in three orientations, while the right was scanned manually while sitting on a pedestal. The manually scanned model didn't turn out as different from the turntable scan as I expected. However, the turntable scan is definitely a bit cleaner. There's less noise and the surfaces are a bit more detailed. This could be due to the turntable being more steady and being able to scan more surfaces than I was able to with the object in a set orientation. Also note that everything I'm scanning is pretty small and the details are still being picked up even in the manual hand scanning mode. Turntable scanning seems to be superior, however, the manual scanning of larger parts that can't be scanned on the turntable won't be of noticeably worse quality. The last feature of this scanner that I wanted to check out is the texture scanning and mapping. The scan process is identical to the geometry scanning process, except you need to check off texture scan when scanning and texture mapping when processing the mesh. I scanned the Spider-Man statue in three orientations with no dry shampoo on it this time to capture the texture of the bust. The geometry of the model isn't as clean as it would be with the dry shampoo, but the texture mapped quickly and easily onto the model. In order to have the texture colored, a separate component needs to be purchased with the scanner, which I currently don't have and that's why my texture is in black and white right now. If I had this scanner before my DIY Steam Deck video, it would have definitely come in handy when I needed a model of an Xbox 360 controller back shell. When scanning one that I have, it created a model that if I cleaned up the mesh before processing would have saved me a lot of time and I definitely would have used this model in my project. I plan on using the Mole 3D scanner for scanning more organically shaped items that I will need for future projects, like my updated DIY Steam Deck videos that I plan on making in the near future. The Mole 3D Scanner is a powerful handheld scanner that is simple to use, produces good results without much preparation of the object being scanned, and can produce even better results by merging multiple scans of an object with proper surface prep. It can't quite scan somewhat glossy objects, but that's an issue that occurs with most 3D scanners. It can scan pretty dark objects and does a good job picking up textures to be mapped within the software. It has some additional components that can be bought separately to add to the experience, such as using the scanner with a mobile device or being able to pick up and map colored textures. Overall, I'm very impressed with the Mole 3D scanner and would definitely recommend it to anyone that would use it to scan small to medium objects. 
If you're interested in purchasing the Mole 3D scanner, use my affiliate links included in the description. Like I said before, there's a 20% off sale from August 21st to the 31st on both the Sane Smart website as well as their Amazon store. Thank you so much for watching, like the video if you enjoyed the review, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this as well as future projects that will likely use this 3D scanner. Leave a comment below and let me know what you'd use this 3D scanner for. Thanks again for watching and have a great rest of your day.